Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday worship. Let us open our time together in prayer. Lord, the disciples gathered around you, trying so hard to answer your questions and to cope with difficult news. We come before you now and ask your blessing as we seek to understand more your story, your tough and challenging but so good story. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Lift High the Cross. Anne will now bring us our reading, followed by the talk, which this week comes from Bishop Paul. The reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. Jesus predicts his death. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, 
this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly, I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The road to resurrection runs to the cross, and as Jesus explains this, his words prove too much for Simon Peter. Let's remember the context of this passage. Literally a couple of verses before, Jesus had said this to Simon, I tell you, you're Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Wonderful words of affirmation and upbuilding. And it's just possible that those words have gone to Peter's head. There are a few examples in scripture of the blessings of God going to people's heads. For example, from the Old Testament, in 1 Kings chapter 18, the prophet Elijah gets himself into a struggle with the many prophets of Baal. And they have a sort of an encounter. And Elijah says, my God is the true God. And he asks God to demonstrate that. And God responds, you'll remember in the story, fire falls from heaven and burns up the sacrifice. Elijah is vindicated. And indeed in his, in his relief at having been vindicated, he turns to violence and those prophets of the false god Baal are all killed. There's Elijah, he's proved his power it's gone to his head. And in the next chapter, 1 Kings chapter 19, he hears that Jezebel, the queen, has determined to kill him and he's suddenly overcome with fear. And he runs away. And he says to God, take my life, God. It's all gone for me. Somehow the power and the blessing and the affirmation of God have turned to ashes in his mouth. And in the New Testament, we can see perhaps the reason for that, which is that the way to true life is the way of the cross, and the way of the cross is to put others first. Affirmation and power from God are given us for a purpose, not simply for their own sakes. Otherwise, we wander from the path so back to Peter, he having received the blessing of affirmation, when Jesus begins to speak about Jesus' own journey to suffering, Peter steps in. Oh no, Lord, that will never happen to you. It should not happen to you. Don't go that way, even though your father may have called you. Jesus turns to Peter, the very one that he's just affirmed. And he says, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You're setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter is rebuked because he wants Jesus to avoid the cross. And we may wonder why he faces such a fierce rebuke when all he's doing is trying to spare pain to look after his friend. But the answer is given in the next verse where the writer tells us that Jesus had a wider message for his disciples. If any want to become my followers, 
Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And he goes on to say, for those who save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. In other words, Peter's desire that Jesus should avoid suffering goes against the grain, not just for Jesus, but for Peter himself and for any of us who might want to follow Jesus. It's not that God wants us to suffer because he's got it in for us. It's that the calling on us is to step out of our comfort zone and to enter a path of self-giving, which needs to be embraced and not resisted because life is found there and nowhere else. In this Diocese of Liverpool, we say, we're asking God for a bigger church to make a bigger difference. And we say, more people knowing Jesus, more justice in the world. In other words, we set ourselves on a path. We're asking God, the path begins by asking, depending on God, accepting that we don't have the strength. It's only God who can help us. And in that help from God, we're called to share our faith and to see justice done. And all of that involves putting others first, following Jesus on that path that leads away from our own comfort and our own self-confidence and towards following Jesus, not only on the hills of joy and life, but into the valley. The whole world is entering the valley as this virus runs around. And as that pain spreads, we can stand for the sake of others and freely say, we're there for you. We're surrounded by people, of course not all Christians, key workers and others, whose lives day by day are spent being there for other people and who run many of them the risks that come with being there for others. We seek to extend care and safety and assurance to our neighbours. And we recognise that care and safety and assurance when we see it. We give thanks and praise to God for those others and when we ourselves can see that we're resisting the temptation to despair the temptation to become angry, the temptation to blame others. Living lives of worship and service, we're seeking always to put others first and to care for them and their well-being. Loving God as we do, we seek to share that love and to speak of it and to speak of Jesus who leads to that love and to work for justice and to feed people, and to spend our lives in their service. Whether they're hungry for God or for bread, we will seek to feed them. It doesn't add up to a masochistic lifestyle of suffering and gloom. It can bring us to a place of extraordinary fruitfulness and lightness and joy. But we reach that place by putting God and others first, the way which the Bible describes as the way of the cross. Now my prayer for you is that you reach that place of lightness and fruitfulness and joy by following, by following Jesus and by standing in company with all those in your community who follow him too. And then you'll be able to be there for the frightened and the hungry and the bereaved and the lost and to give yourself to them in service for the sake of love. I thank you again for all that you and your community have already done to extend love and life and care to your neighbourhood and those you love in this pandemic. And I pray for you that you'll continue down that road, just as I ask your prayers for me and all my colleagues in the diocese, 
but God will give us strength to walk that road too. May God bless you and protect you as you serve and love. And may the affirmation and strength of God, which is so freely given, lead you to follow, to be there for others first. On this Sunday and on into this coming autumn and forever. Amen. God, you reproached Peter because he only had human concerns, but Peter just wanted to protect the ones he loved. We pray for people the world over who find themselves in difficult situations. We pray that they would all have someone to care for them and lift them before you. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith. For all who are misunderstood, for asylum seekers who flee real danger in their homeland. We pray for those who work tirelessly to address wrongs. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for people whose lives don't always work out right, through their fault or through no fault of their own. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the people in our lives who need your protection, Lord, that we will always be faithful in prayer for them. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our next hymn, I Come With Joy, A Child of God.
I would just like to mention some notices. A reminder that both St Michael's and Holy Trinity will open for public worship next Sunday following government guidelines, which will include wearing a face mask, sitting two metres apart, and also uh, staying in your pew while you receive communion. Uh, the full set of guidelines will be on both websites and also will be posted out to members of the electoral roll so you know what to expect when you come to church. Some of you are still nervous about coming to church, which is understandable, and so we are going to continue with the YouTube services and also I'm very happy to come to your garden and lead an outdoor communion. A notice for Bickerstaff. Um, Mary has been in touch and asked me to mention Mike, uh, requesting that you remember him in your prayers as he is ill in hospital at the moment. So please remember Mike uh, and of course Mary in your prayers. Notice for St Michael's, there is no church opening uh, in September on a Thursday afternoon. The only time the church will be open will be on Sunday at 9.30. And now we're going to sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday to you everyone. Happy Birthday to you. Once again, thank you for sharing your activities and photographs with us. We're now going to sit back and enjoy this week's gallery. Carol and Ken will now lead us in our prayers for the current situation. A prayer remembering God is with us. Lord God, you are always with us. You are with us in the day and in the night. You are with us when we're happy and when we're sad. You are with us when we're healthy and when we are ill. You are with us when we are peaceful and when we are worried. Help us to remember that you love us and you are with us in everything today. 
Amen. A prayer for those self-isolating. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadows of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We sing our final hymn, Tell Out My Soul. Let us pray. Lord God, you knew what was going to happen to you. You didn't flinch or back away. You calmly told the disciples and us what to expect. As we go out now, remind us constantly to look to you in the good and the tough times. Guide us as we go in your name. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.